Oh, hello YouTube. I am back from my break. Uh, welcome back to uh, another season of some clips from class where you get to learn some tidbits of stuff that I talk about back when we were running the show, the show, uh, the course with our weekly meetings. Anyway, um, for more information about the class, check out the links in the description. By the way, the MedsMap course will actually be on the Proco site soon too. Ooh. All right. Enjoy the clip. Oh, that green one's really interesting. That nice deep red in the shadows. But I don't have anything to say about these. Nothing standing out. Do you have any questions? Yeah. How does light play into shape design? Like the one on the bottom left? Yeah. I don't really know how to, I'm not sure if this is the right term, but I don't know how to do window lighting and that sort of stuff. Like casting light onto a thing and making Yeah. It it's like if, if there was a character in a forest and all those light shining through the leaves. Yeah. I think that's pretty cool, but I'm not sure how to pull that off. Sure. So let's just do that with this one. That would shape design too. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's like, I'm not sure who this artist is, but it's, it's already a good design, right? So it has nice shapes and you know, this artist spent a lot of time making these shapes. So why would we just put a triangle of light here or whatever? There's, there's a lot that you can do with that, but um, right, let's just jump into it. So I'm gonna make a copy, make it darker, the shadow version. I'm gonna hit Control B, add some cool, you can go warm as well, either way, it's fine. And let's pretend she's in a forest. So it's one thing to just say, okay, well, let's, let's let the light come through and we'll render the shadows and then all that stuff. And does that work? Yeah, fair enough. It looks like there's light there, but another thing you could do is design with shape design, the pattern of where we want to look and where the light's going to hit. So let's say we can say, typically speaking, by the way, if you have a big medium and small shape, well, let's say that's, this is the small, usually the small area, because it's so small, it's going to have more detail and it's going to be the focal point. So, which can change depending on what you're looking at. Cause we are going to naturally look at faces anyway, but if you have like a, a big area and then a medium area and then a small area over here, that's one solution where you can say, all right, the leaves are going to hit or the, the, the shadows of the leaves are going to be covering everything except these spots. Now we're using shape design to lead the eye up to here. And you know, it's, it's just a triangle now, but you could like put a bigger area and then find a leaf brush or something to get the actual leaf shapes. Like that or whatever. Oops. And, but, but the thing is each time you're going to design these shapes, it depends on the, the purpose. It's like, do you want the person to seem like they're kind of stalking in the shadows or or something like that. And you could say, no, I, I actually want to feature, oh, whoops, feature the head and the face. And so you do shape design again. Well, what if we have a big triangle like this? All right, cool. That's going to be lit. And then over here, uh, we've got a, a small and then maybe a medium down over here in this area. And then we'll do that again. But notice the separation of the two where, not the two, the three, there's enough negative space between them to kind of uh, make it work. And like, granted, it's, it's pretty like harsh lighting and that will give us the opportunity to, again, cast light or I'm sorry, cast shadows. And then you get yourself a, a leaf brush or whatever. And just by doing that, it just feels a bit more interesting than just completely lit. Uh, so the, the next question is, it's like, okay, well, what about the background? Well, what I would do is do the same thing where it's like, I want to emphasize these shapes. So I'm going to make it bright here. And then not here, because it's right next to the light on the face, but over here. And so you can pretty quickly set up nice, appealing lighting scenarios 
Yeah, you can fade it in a little bit. That's fine. Let's cast a bit of a shadow like that. And, you know, within seconds, you can compose just a, a handful of them that are legitimate. So that would hopefully that answers your question. Make sense? Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. I think that's it for me. Cool. Uh, straightforward. Good. I, yeah, pretty straightforward. I, I feel like I didn't have much issue with it. Looks unless like you it. see any, but I, I did want to know if you could do a demo on how to paint a face with these values in mind. Cause I was like, I don't know. I kind of got lost. Uh, yeah. So it, it, it's great to do these exercises because the, uh, the information's all there and it's like, I could take what I can guess to be the local value, which is definitely not the highlight and definitely not the shadow. Well, that's the shadow mm -hmm. and find somewhere in between. And as if I have like a lump of clay just sitting here, I can like push and pull geometry and it helps to kind of just sketch a quick face out. So I'll do that. And I just see like a, a dude looking to the left for some reason, maybe like a dwarf goblin. Right. So uh, depending on your sketching ability or mental library or a reference, either way is fine. You can now just take this information, which is light hitting polygons and geometry, and then put it onto this. So if I just erase that silhouette real quick, I could lock the transparency and borrow some of that shadow. Let's grab a uh, the rectangle brush inspired by Julia today. It's this whole bottom half is it's like a sphere. So I'm going to treat it like that and then blend it in either with the airbrush or a mixer brush. Either. That one's fine. So it's you're just doing the egg again, just in a slightly different geometry. Mm -hmm. So I can borrow that. That's a sphere. So there's going to be a highlight falling off from there. That's a few right there. Uh, some geometry facing upward there. And then there's going to be cast shadows as well. So the brow edge is kind of like a cylinder, which we know all this from um, the facial features assignment. Let's actually emphasize the core shadow a bit overall. And let's um, grab that mid color. Yeah, there we go. And so we just create the illusion of light again, just uh, on different polygons. And then um, how do you handle the like bottom lighting? Because I always have a hard time with the fall off. I don't know like where to end. What do you mean? I Like, I don't know. I'm like, oh, this is bottom lit, but I'm like, like I struggle with which where exactly you would see the bottom lighting, oh, okay. like on the bottom of the lip, on the bottom of the nose, on the bottom right. stroll, on the eyebrow, like. So, yeah, you know. if it was parallel light, which is something like sunlight, which means like it's very strong and no matter where in the piece, it's going to be uh, continuous and constant. And it's going to be the same brightness for the most part in the scene uh, on whatever it hits. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on the lighting. So if there's just a, a flame here, you can imagine that it, it's going to have a radius and a, and a fall off. So anything in this zone is going to be the brightest. But as you go further out, things won't be catching as much photons. However, if it was some kind of really strong LED light, now that radius just might be longer and the constant illusion might be stronger. So, you know, it could be uh, very strong under light like this, as if he's right above a flame or like a fire pit or on that same um, layer. What I could do is just grab the airbrush eraser and start from here and just carefully just erase downward. So I guess to answer your question, it really depends on the intensity and strength of the light source. I like that airbrush tip. That's a good tip. Yeah. And then from here, you can uh, 
still use the information of the dark stuff. Let's say we want to put a tattoo or something on the side of his head, Viking or something. So we can just sketch that in, go all the way down. And then peek over here and notice that it's going to be brighter in that light. So let's make it brighter wherever it's light and then fade that in. Maybe a little bit darker right there. So if you zoom out, it, it should read pretty well. Well, cool. cool. I think that, that's my question. Great. Thank you. All right. All right, hope you enjoyed that clip from class. Just a reminder to check the link in the description for the course. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.